Hey guys, what's up? I am back. Tonight is finally clear, so we're going to be doing an image comparison between 7 and 3 nanometer filters. This video is a continuation of the last video, um, so tonight we're going to be imaging the Rosette Nebula on our 3 nanometer filters, and we're going to be comparing them to the 7 nanometer filters. I, I already have um, data from um, a long time ago with uh, 7 nanometers on the same image, so um, it's going to be exciting. Uh, looking forward to seeing the results so stay tuned and let's go ahead and get started okay as you can see here i have my telescope all set up and ready um, i'm very excited to see the results of these new filters that we installed um, previously and all i'm waiting for now is for it to get dark uh, the sun is setting it should be dark in about an hour um, so let's go ahead um, in the meantime let's hop over to the computer and see what we have uh, set up there okay guys so now we are on my computer on my mount uh, as you can see, we have Sequence Generator Pro opened up, and I have the Rosette Nebula sequence open. Um, I have my hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur filters set, exposures of 5 minutes each. Um, I'm going to do one test image first to make sure that um, uh, everything's correct and looking good. I'm going to do it on hydrogen alpha, and we are going to find out um, how great these filters actually are. And I'm sure they are pretty amazing. Right now, I am waiting for it to get dark. Um, it is still a little light out. It is at dusk right now. Um, and as you can see, I have my polar scope open. It is still a little too bright um, to see Polaris. If I put my hand in front of the camera, you can see my shadow of my fingers and my hand. Um, so it's getting there. If I open camera on my computer, you're gonna be able to see how um, bright it is outside. So as you can see here, there's the moon up there. It's not even, uh, it's not even a half moon. It's a little less than that, and uh, the sun is setting behind my house up there. And here is my telescope, um, and the polar scope camera is right here. So yeah, as we wait, um, I will come back when. Um, I get polar aligned and before I take my first image. All right, everyone, I have successfully polar aligned my scope and now we are gonna be um, doing our first slew to the rosette. So let's go ahead and open up settings on this rosette here. And we're gonna go ahead and go under Chrome here. I'm gonna go to our Telescopius website, search up the rosette, click that. And now that we are on this page here, we're going to go ahead and uh, copy the URL and we're going to paste it right into our popul populate link option and check it, make sure it works. Indeed it does. Hit OK. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and slew now. We're going to do slew, not slew now, we're going to do center now. And before I do that, actually, we're going to go ahead and unpark our mount um, on the right here. There you go. And now we're going to go ahead and once again go back in the settings and we're going to go ahead and do um, center now. Now it's running a, it's going to stop and now it's going to run a validation frame using the luminance filter. Obviously there are some trees in the way, but we will um, get it all straightened out. Okay, it just did a correction and now it's taking another 15 second exposure. Let's see what it shows here. Yep, there's the center of it. And again, there's the tree branches, so we will get past that pretty soon. It's right on the edge of it anyway. Just want to make sure it gets aligned properly and everything's polar aligned correctly. Okay guys, so it has been an hour or two and we are well into our imaging session. Um, I have my first image of the Rosette Nebula on 3 nanometer hydrogen alpha um, behind this window here. And here it is. Um, it looks pretty damn impressive. Um, I will really see a difference once we compare it to our 7 nanometer hydrogen filters. 
Um, so right now we are doing a um, sequence on hydrogen. As you can see in the top here, 5 out of 10. I've tested oxygen and sulfur, and I will reveal those when I get to that eventually. Um, let's take a look at guiding here. Guiding's looking not horrible. It's 0.7 around there. So hopefully it um, doesn't really get any worse. It, it was at 0 0.5, 0 0.6 before, and it kind of went up a little bit. But it's making corrections as it should be. And yeah, now we wait. So I will come back when it is on oxygen. Okay, everyone. So here is the oxygen five-minute exposure on three nanometer filters. Uh, doesn't look like much. I'm. It's probably better than the seven. I would guarantee it. Um, we will check that in a little bit. But um, as you can see, there is some fine detail in the middle. Um, it has this. Um, little arch of uh, I guess gas and the uh, rest of it is just kind of faded out um, the gray the haze is kind of concerning a little bit hopefully that will be removed with pics in sight um, but yeah that's what we have for oxygen uh, next up is sulfur so we're gonna go ahead and wait for that and I will show you that when it's ready okay so I have the images for sulfur and here is the results of that um, doesn't look like much, but there is actually some different detail that I've never noticed before. Um, obviously, it doesn't show um, the main core of it, which is like around here. Um, it shows more of the outer uh, outer parts of it. Um, there's some nebulosity here, there's some gases here and here, and uh, that's pretty much it. Um, but when I stack them, obviously it'll come out a little more. It'll be more prominent, but uh, right now it's um, it's looking decent. Um, I still have to compare them to the sevens, um, which I will do in a little bit. But um, we are five out of 11 done right here. So uh, we have about 26 minutes left um, in a sequence. If I have uh, a chance to do more, I will add more on um, to the sequence. But right now it's uh, looking pretty decent. So I will be back with an update in a little bit. Hey everyone, so we are on my computer now and we're going to be doing um, the filter comparisons between the 3 and 7 nanometer filters. Um, the object we're going to be comparing today is the Rosette Nebula. Uh, I chose this because mainly it has a lot of detail and there's a lot of uh, things you could pick and choose um, what may be missing or what may be different between the two filters. So let's go ahead and first open up our hydrogen alpha photo. All right, so on the left, we have the seven nanometer filter um, picture. And then on the right, we have the three. Uh, both pictures are uh, five minute exposures um, and they're on hydrogen alpha. So as you can see, the comparison, it's pretty obvious. The right one on the right is brighter um, and obviously has a lot more detail. Uh, one other thing you notice is that it is actually rotated in different orientation. Um, that is due to a meridian flip that happened uh, throughout the night so it's just basically flipped upside down but when you process it the software flips it back and it's fine but um, just try to ignore that for now but um, yeah so as you can see here um, this one is brighter this is the three uh, if you were to zoom in here really quick I'm um, not trying to zoom in too much because that just makes it look nasty. Um, but you can see this little wisp of gas is pretty faint. Uh, if you were to zoom in on this one, um, it is significantly brighter than uh, the one on the left. Um, this is due to the filter being 3 nanometer and um, basically allowing more detail to show from this nebula. Um, so it's... Uh, Overall, it's just much more detailed from that. Another thing you can see here is that if I were to zoom in on uh, this area, both images here, um, this is the same area, just upside down. Um, you can see that this is much fainter. You don't see as much like glow behind here compared to here. So um, you could definitely get some sort of uh, feeling of depth um, in this picture compared to this one. This one just kind of seems like it's just kind of faintly glowing. It's not really that prominent. This one really shows a lot more. 
And lastly, from what I noticed is that there is actually a haze kind of like right here. So it kind of like it's kind of brighter here and then it's darker up here. Um, this is due to uneven light pollution and all of that and the filter basically allowing light in um, that obviously is not supposed to be there. So um, yeah, that's that. And obviously in this one, you have you have none of that. It's all, it's a flat frame. There's no, um, no halo, no glowing, no haze, nothing. So that should make a good, um, a good final image. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the oxygen filters. Okay, so on the left is seven, once again, on the right is three. Um, obviously, once again, there is a huge difference. Um, they are still flipped because of the meridian flip that happened. Um, one thing you notice is that, once again, it is brighter on the right. Um, there is more detail. And if you zoom in here, you can barely see that gas wisp, right? Well, if you zoom in here, you almost see all of it. <laughs> so, um, once again, that is a huge difference uh, compared to them. So right here is the, that's what I'm looking at in the other picture, and then right there. So you can barely see it in this one. But um, yeah, and uh, again, there is a, um, a small glow uh, right here, and it doesn't look too bad, same with this one, but when you add them all up, it um, really becomes necessary that you need flat frames. Um, I'm trying to avoid flat frames at all costs because I just, I really haven't been too lucky with them. So I am trying my absolute best to um, avoid flat frames and get as little halo as possible or a little as ha little haze as possible. Um, I've gotten lucky so far. This image looks pretty flat in my opinion, but, um, but yeah, overall the difference is pretty much the same as the other hydrogen alpha one. It's just brighter, a lot more detail, and overall, just you'll get a lot more out of it compared to the seven ones. Next up, we're gonna go on to the sulfur images. All right, so once again, the images are flipped, but um, you can, again, you can see a huge difference. Um, this, the seven nanometer one on the left, really has nothing to show. You can see a tiny bit, but that's all you're really gonna get, especially in the skies we have here, um, Bortle eight and nine. It's uh, basically almost city skies. <laughs> um, and then uh, on the right with the three nanometer, you can see a whole lot more, um, a lot more than I actually thought I would ever get, um, to be honest. But um, you can see that there is the same um, detail that we got in the oxygen and hydrogen, which is the pillar uh, part of that, part of this nebula, it's um, it's there. You can see it. Comparing to this one, I don't even know where to find it. It's um, probably somewhere over here, but I don't really know. Um, looking for that little uh, wisp of gas, I guess you would call it, that is right here, and I can't even find it on here. I don't know where it is, and this might be it. I'm not sure, but yeah. And then moving on about flat frame or about halo or glow um, both of them seem pretty good but um, the one that has the most detail I think is gonna be this one it's definitely the winner so that is uh, that is the comparison between the two seven and three nanometer filters um, hopefully I hope that you, hopefully you got something out of it it's pretty cool to see a difference between them um, I highly advise and highly recommend getting these filters because they will do such a good job in um, helping you out with your imaging session and not having any nights where you just don't get anything. Um, so hopefully that helped you out and uh, yeah. Okay, so if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Uh, I think that's going to put it to the end of this video today. I hope you enjoyed the comparison between the two filters. Um, it really does make a difference um, between a three and seven. So I definitely recommend getting, if you have the chance, get a three nanometer filter because it will help you so much, uh, especially in narrow band imaging. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what I do and like, you, like what you see, uh, get, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you see when I post next. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more. Uh, I plan on posting more and uh, see you guys later.